Hello there. Uh, welcome now to the second lesson of pressure. Here we're going to look at maximum pressure and minimum pressure um, in cases where the force is constant. And actually we shall look at also the applications of the two. And let me start with this question. What is a Pasco? So what is a Pasco if I ask you? From the formula, pressure, to get pressure, we get the force divided by the area of contact. So our question is, when do we get one Pasco? When I say pa a Pasco, it means I mean one Pasco. So to get one Pasco, it means that this normal force should be one Newton and it should be acting on an area of one meter squared. So putting that together, we can say comfortably that a Pasco is the pressure exerted on an area of one meter squared. Is the pressure exerted on an area of one meter squared due to a force of one Newton acting normally. The force should be of one Newton and it should be acting normally. Now we want to go to maximum pressure and to minimum and minimum pressure. From actually what we have that pressure is equal to force over area now realize that if force is kept constant for our case here our F is going to be constant so if F is a constant then realize that you should see see this clearly that the pressure is going to be inversely proportional to the area of contact in other words the greater the area of contact the less the pressure and the less the area of contact the greater the pressure so we have two expressions that come from that understanding. So for us to get minimum pressure, minimum pressure, pressure mini. The, remember the force is a constant, the area of contact should be maximum. And on the other hand, if I want to get maximum pressure, of course, the area of contact has to be minimum. We are leaving the force as a constant. We are leaving the force constant. We are not changing. If it is the weight, we keep the same object, so we keep the same weight. We maintain the same weight. What do we mean by minimum area and maximum area? Look at a case where we have a cuboid. This is a cuboid. A cuboid. So, um, the maximum area, if you look at the side, for example, if you have a match, match box or you have a box, you realize that there is a side. There are two sides always, opposite sides that are biggest. Yes, the biggest side is that. That face has the maximum area. And then this other one, which I'm shading in green, has the minimum area, this other one here. Yeah, and actually they are always opposite too. Even the other uh, bottom and the top, they are also two, maximum. Um, they, they are faces with the maximum area. All right, as long as you know that, then life becomes easy. Let's now look at an example. A box of mass, 6 kilograms, measures. It measures um, 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters by 3 centimeters. Okay. And the question says, calculate the maximum pressure. Calculate the maximum pressure. So what you're supposed to do here, simply, if they give you dimensions in centimeters, convert straight away to meters. Of course, the biggest is 10 followed by 5 and the least is 3. So if you want to get maximum area, use the biggest 2 to get maximum area. These ones are going to give you maximum area, area max. And if you want to get a minimum area, use the smallest 2. These are going to give you area many. And always comfortably, first convert them in meters to meters. So, 0. Point, oh, sorry, um, 10 centimeters to meters divided by, you get 10 divided by 100, you get 0. 0.1. Then 5 centimeters to meters, you get 0. 0.05 after dividing by 100. And 3 centimeters also when you get 3 divided by 100, you get 0. 0.03 meters. So here we are. So we have that if you want to get maximum area, you will get 0. 0.1 times 0. 0.05. If you want to get minimum area, you will get uh, 5 and multiply by 0. 0.03. All right, now... Uh, by the way, on the other hand, a student can choose to first get their area. I want to take that example also. Someone can, deci can decide to first get the, the maximum area in centimeters squared. is going to be 10 centimeters multiplied by 5 and they end up with 50 centimeters squared. 50 centimeters squared. And then they convert the 50 centimeters squared to meters squared. But you have to remember that if you're converting from centimeters squared to meters squared, you're going to divide by 10,000. So it will be 50 Divide by 10,000. Whatever you get here will be in meters squared. And that is going to be comfortably 0 .0, 0 .005, 0 0.005 meters squared. Which actually you can easily obtain just by multiplying 0 0.1 times 0 0.05. You get the same. Okay. Now, our question here required us to, the question said the box of mass 6 kilograms measures 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters by 3 centimeters. Calculate the Roman 1 maximum pressure. You know how to get maximum pressure. To get maximum pressure, simply, we are going to get the force divided by the minimum area. Now, there is another technique here. 
another technique look at this hey <laughs> instead of giving you the force they gave you the mass so convert this into weight convert that into weight so we have um we converted by multiplying by 10 so the formula accounts maximum pressure is force over minimum area these others but you can keep them to yourself so the force is simply the weight which is 6 times 10 divided by, by the minimum area which i've shown here 0 0.05 times 0 0.03 and you end up with 40,000 pascals altogether as the uh, maximum pressure maximum pressure then of course roman 2 roman 2 i expect uh someone to know how to get uh minimum pressure this one here i'm leaving it just here very simple the minimum pressure which the box can exert on the floor is going to be start with the formula start with the formula the formula is force over uh, area the area has to be a maximum because we're looking for minimum pressure substitute properly showing the working showing the working for you have to show the working for oh yes okay you have to show the working for getting the minimum area the maximum area yeah and our answer here is 12,000 pascals 12,000 pascals okay okay um now let's look at cases that involve application of that knowledge and we start we want to start by making a simple explanation a question comes and i hope you all know needles yes like the ones that they use for injections so explain why one feels more pain when pricked with a needle than when pricked with a nail a very common question the reason is because we reason in terms of pressure but remember to talk about pressure you have to talk about the area of contact so the answer is simple the needle you better write it please better write it you keep pausing and then you write a needle makes a smaller area of contact first marking point smaller area of contact mm -hmm. with the body hence it exerts greater pressure hey now when the area of contact is smaller the pressure is going to be greater and what does that do and therefore it will penetrate more or you can say deeper it penetrates more or deeper into the body causing so it is penetrating deeper and causing more pain causing more pain okay such a question actually may take around four marks i'm assuming around four marks um basic uh, explanations are required now what about the nail on the other hand a nail makes a larger area of contact on the other hand a nail makes a larger area of contact the area of contact but it's not surface area not surface area you're saying larger area of contact with the body mm -hmm. hence it exerts less pressure wow when the area of contact is larger the pressure is going to be less and it penetrates less and penetrates less penetrates less into the body causing less pain causing less pain so you have your four marks just in a very simple way very simple way i'm trying to make it visible the whole of it visible yeah something like that a needle makes a smaller area of contact you can read through take a snapshot do whatever is easy for you to capture this information why it feels more painful to be pricked with a needle than to be pricked with a nail right now there is an assumption many times they ask you state the assumption made i never asked so if i ask you what is the assumption state what is the assumption state the assumption made the assumption what are you gonna say now of course of course um if if someone if you give a nail to a baby if you give a, a the needle to a baby and then you get give a nail to someone who knows the value of food ha huh, my friend <laughs> it will be more painful to be pricked with a nail than with a needle so we have to make the assumption that the same force is being applied yeah the same force is being applied on both the needle and the nail so the assumption is here right here that the same force the same force or an equal force is used when pricking are uh, using a needle and a nail so we are using the same force it's supposed to score a full mark i'm uh, sorry i put an a half but i mean yep one mark one mark all right um all right so um we have a few cases here to close it up to close it up we have a few cases here other cases of maximum pressure and minimum pressure i want to bring to your attention the following number one number one high heeled shoes versing flat shoes mm -hmm. um why is it that if someone is more on a sunday morning for example going for prayers and then you have the high -heeled shoes and another person in flat shoes uh why is it that the person with the high heeled shoes finds it difficult to walk <laughs> look at that so the area of contact the high heeled shoes make a smaller area of contact with the ground uh, as compared to the to the flat shoes so talk about each if you want to exhaust all the marking points you'll say the high heeled shoes i'm giving you this as a task 
to write them out. I'm talking about these points, but you can write them down. The high, the high heeled shoes make a smaller area of contact with the ground. Mm -hmm. And exert greater pressure. So when they exert greater pressure, what happens? Hence, they penetrate into the mud and get stuck. Okay? So let's go through again. The high heeled shoes make a smaller area of contact with the ground. Or you can say high heeled shoe makes a smaller area of contact with the ground. Exerting a greater pressure. Exerting a greater pressure. And hence penetrating into the mud and getting stuck. What about the flat shoes? For the flat shoes, they make a larger or wider area of contact with the ground. With the muddy ground, for example. Exerting less pressure, or and they exert less pressure, and hence penetrate less into the mud, and so do not get stuck. So talk about the sticking. The flat shoes will not get stuck. The high heel shoes will get stuck. Last is a case where we have a goat and a hippo. Goat and a hippopotamus. The goat. Look at the. Hmm. I don't know what I should call them. The hooves. The hooves of the goat. They are smaller. So the hooves of the goat make. A goat's hoof, hoof, just one, makes a smaller area of contact with the ground. By the way, the, the goat's hooves are always like, they're a little pointed like this. They are pointed. If you check down there, yeah. So, uh, a goat's hoof makes a small a smaller area of contact with the ground. It makes a smaller area of contact with the ground. Um, and exerts greater pressure. Greater pressure, it's comparative. Greater pressure, hence... The hoof penetrates into the mud or the ground and the goat can get stuck into the mud. Now, the common question which is always asked here is, why is it that a goat cannot walk in a swampy surface or a swamp, but a hippopotamus will walk through the swamp? You know the swamp is muddy and it has clay, that stick soil, sticky soil. So, the special explanation here is related to pressure. The goat's hoof, a goat's hoof, just one, has, makes a smaller area of contact with the mud and exerts greater pressure, hence it penetrates deeper into the mud and the goat gets stuck. The hippo, on the other hand, for it, it's, um, I think, feet or hoofs, I'm not so sure of how they are called. For them, they make a larger area of contact with the mud and, and, and exert less pressure, hence the hippo penetrates less, hence the hoof or the feet penetrate less into the mud so the hippo does not get stuck into the mud all right lastly yes cutting with a sharp knife the sharp knife is this this one here sorry i interchanged the diagrams and then the blunt knife is this one of course everyone would say i would love to use a sharp knife because i'm a sharp student okay now the blunt or the knife the okay let me just show you the cross-sectional area of the areas of contact for the sharp knife if this is what you're cutting the sharp knife I mean, this, its area of contact is very small, very minimum. The blunt knife for it is going to be, okay, <laughs> it's going to, you see the area of contact that it makes. So, um, sharp knife, blunt knife, sharp knife, okay. The blunt knife, the blunt knife or the dull knife, for it, it makes a larger area of contact with the, what, with what is being cut or the food. And hence does not penetrate deep into the food and it makes cutting hard you have to use a lot of force but on the other hand the sharp sharp knife for it it makes a smaller area of contact with the food and exerts greater pressure hence a smaller force can be used to cut easily through the food yeah so um i will be dropping some questions please for those of us who are coaching via the online coaching uh, feel free to ask questions we shall ask answer other questions sorry not ask but answer the questions thank you so very kindly i want to wish you the best of the rest of the day god bless you i remain teacher dennis monday max Mas. my contact is right here reach me out on whatsapp so that we can help you further god bless you bye 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 okay that was a nine this is teacher monday please don't adjust my name someone had saved it as teacher tuesday that was not fair teacher monday and that's the spelling Bye-bye, everybody.